Hello again, I'm Nick, and you're watching this month's Song of Asira devlog. I've got a number of new things to talk about this month, but let's start out where we left off last month's video, in the game's first temple, which is now called the Shaded Sanctuary. Let me just put the last piece in place to solve this puzzle. You see how the camera moved like that to show what happened? That little move was common enough that I turned it into a generic action, so I don't have to write the same code for it over and over. You'll see it again as I walk out this door. This puzzle and another are both part of what I'm calling a meta-puzzle, so solving both puzzles unlocks something new as well. Now there's a lot to talk about here. In the last devlog, this room looked quite different. As it's the main hall and sort of the centerpiece of the temple, I wanted it to have a very dramatic appearance, so I created these parallax background layers for it. Actually, the last upload on this channel, right before the video you're watching now, is a time-lapse of how I drew those backgrounds, so definitely go check that out. The other thing you might have noticed when I solved the meta puzzle is that this updraft activated. The hang glider, which I've shown in a few previous videos, is the special tool that you'll be finding in the Shaded Sanctuary, and the updrafts are one of the key new ways that it will help you get around. Just watch what happens if we deploy our glider while we're inside the updraft. You'll find these sort of updrafts out in the overworld as well, so once you have the glider, you can come back to those locations and see what was behind them. Let's take a quick break from the Shaded Sanctuary and return to the overworld. I want to show you these new iron gates. Around the world, you'll come across these gates which can't be opened. Once you've taken a longer and more challenging path, you may find yourself coming around to the back side of a gate you've already seen before. From this side, the gate will open, permanently, and you'll have created yourself a shortcut. With this technique, I can make the world interconnected, while still forcing players to go a certain way, at least once. Let me go over some improvements to the game's user interface. You may have already noticed the new time of day indicator in the lower left corner. Not only does it look a lot better than the old one, but it's smaller and less obtrusive too. The health indicator in the upper left now shows the leading heart slightly larger than the rest of them. That should make it easier to see at a glance what your current health level is. Now let me show you the first significant changes I've made to the pause menu since I first showed it off back in July. The navigation between the submenus has been reworked and looks a little more compact and clean, but the inventory menu specifically has been completely redesigned. The first tab shows your tools and equipment. Tools are items like the handbell, of which only one can be equipped at a time, so selecting one here changes that highlight to show which tool is currently equipped. The lower section of this tab is your other equipment, each of which can be toggled on and off individually. On the next tab we've got the materials, which you use in spellcasting. This one has the icon grid-based approach as well, and here you also get a little badge right on each icon showing how many of that material you have. This should make it really easy to take stock at a glance. Finally, we have the key items. Since you don't interact with these in the menu at all, it's just a simple scrolling list. But it's still nice to get that flavor text. Okay, now that we've gotten some fresh air, let's dive back into the temple with a new type of challenge called a gauntlet. These rooms will be combat challenges, where you'll have to defeat wave after wave of monster. When all of the monsters are defeated, the gates will open back up and you'll get your reward. I've coded this challenge in a very generic and modular way, so I can implement other gauntlets without having to write much new code. The last thing I want to show you today is another part of the Shaded Sanctuary, and while this room isn't fully fleshed out yet, it's the visual effect I want to talk about. This is one of the temple's two towers, and I wanted to create an effect that looked like you were walking around the outside of a cylindrical structure, so here it is. You can see the pseudo 3D effect, the pixels squeeze closer together as they move towards the edges of the screen, and they get darkened as well. This took a ton of work and a ton of math to get looking the way I wanted it. Also, in doing this, I created a whole framework for full screen shader effects, and the sky is really the limit on what we could do with it, so definitely look forward to future areas with effects like a heat shimmer or maybe even crazier stuff. And that covers everything I wanted to show you today. Before you go, please like this video, and consider subscribing so you don't miss any Song of Asira content. Also, check the links in the description to find my Twitter, where I'm always going on about indie game development, and my Patreon, where you can support the creation of this game for as little as a dollar a month, and get some great exclusive content in return. As always, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.